Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. So for those of you who follow my channel, you'll know that I'm interested in any study relating to the microbiome. So I was pretty interested when this study came out just the other day from Nature. The maternal microbiome modulates fetal neurodevelopment in mice. So I thought it'd be cool to talk about this paper in more detail and highlight some of the key features that examine the connection between the mother's, so the maternal microbiome, and brain development in mouse fetuses. So yep, as I've just said, this is a mouse study, not a human study, but this is nonetheless still very interesting and furthers my prediction that we will see a lot more insight into the microbiome in the coming years as techniques and tools to study it enhance. So in this video, I'll first just give a brief background, then we'll talk about the study and their results and maybe talk a bit more about how this might be happening and what is the link between maternal microbiome and neuronal development in offspring. And then lastly, I'll give a bit of an outlook. So the microbiome is a fancy word used to describe the different bacteria, viruses and fungi within our bodies. So effectively everything that isn't human cells. And majority of the time, the microbiome is referring to bacteria, in particular bacteria that inhabit the gut microbiome. So this is bacteria present within your large intestine. And so this gut microbiome is not just a passenger within our bodies. It plays an active role through the secretion of a variety of different compounds that they generate that can influence metabolism, immunity, and of relevance for this video, neuronal development. And previous studies reinforce this point. In particular, studies in mice have shown that the maternal gut microbiota is necessary for maintaining normal fetal development after maternal inflammation and that changes in the maternal microbiota due to having consumption of a high fat diet can also lead to neurobehavioral abnormalities in the offspring. However, it isn't necessarily clear from these studies whether or not these alterations in the maternal microbiota is affecting development of the fetus during gestation or postnatally. Moreover, it was currently unclear whether or not the maternal microbiota can influence the developing embryo in unstressful conditions, so in normal homeostasis. So that's what the authors of this paper set out to achieve. So to understand the results of this paper, you need to understand the three different conditions the authors had the mice growing in. Firstly, you've got your control mice. Secondly, they had germ-free mice, which are mice that are reared to the void of microbial colonization. And then lastly, they had antibiotic-treated mice that, due to the nature of antibiotics, depletes the microbiome. So these were the conditions used for the pregnant mice and then the authors examined the phenotypes and neurophysiology of the embryos. And so the first main finding that the study showed was that the maternal microbiota promotes axonogenesis. So genesis referring to generation and axon referring to the axon of a neuron which is the long process of the neuron. So the studies show that in mid-gestation stage embryos of microbiota deficient mothers, so the germ-free mothers or the antibiotic-treated mothers, had neuronal projections, so the axons, connecting the region of the cortex to the thalamus, just two different brain regions, were smaller and shorter than the control mother offspring. And so the thalamus is a small structure within the brain and its main function is to relay motor and sensory signals to the cerebral cortex. And so maybe it wasn't surprising that the authors found that the offspring from microbiota deficient mothers had impairments in neurobehavioral responses to forepaw and hindpaw tactile stimuli. However, they didn't see any differences in their visual sensory behaviour or their motor coordination. And so whilst this might be interesting, the key question is why and how was the depletion of the microbiota influencing the fetal development of the brain? And so since the gut microbiota produces a variety of different biochemicals into the circulating blood of the mother, that is where the authors decided to look. And interestingly, by looking at the metabolites produced from the mother on these different conditions, so whether or not they were germ-free, treated with antibiotics or the control mice. They saw that there was a clear difference in the metabolomic profile. So what this means is that in the maternal serum there were some metabolites that were higher within the control mice than in the microbiota depleted mice 
And the authors found that by taking four of the metabolites that are much higher in the control mothers could actually rescue and promote the axonogenesis within the offspring of the microbiota depleted mothers. And this also helped to improve the tactile sensory behaviour of the mice. So to quote from the actual article, the overall take home is that the results show that the maternal microbiome promotes fetal thalamocortical axonogenesis in mice probably via microbiota dependent biochemicals such as TMAO and IP in the fetal brain. So the study supports previous research showing a connection between the gut microbiome and fetal development, particularly of the brain. But it still isn't entirely clear why offspring from microbiota depleted mothers show specific defects in reactions to heat, sound and pressure detection. But the study nonetheless further raises a warning for the use of antibiotics during neurodevelopment of developing offspring and I quite like this outlook from this nature summary that also suggests that if you have biomarkers of the mother you might be able to supplement back with these different metabolites to try and enhance the neural development of their growing fetuses like there already is the supplementation of folic acids to help with the development of the neural tube. So I hope you've learned something from this brief paper overview and as always thanks for listening.